Hey everybody, it is Dak here from Feed Boys, and welcome to my OSRS Solo Sarah Domen Guide. The goal of this guide is to give you any information that I feel you might need going into Solo the Sarah Domen God Wars Dungeon Boss. Sarah Domen is definitely the easiest God Wars Dungeon Boss to solo, and overall, it is the least dangerous one, though it can make a pretty solid profit. If you have any questions after watching any section of the guide, be sure to let me know in the comments section below so I can get back to you as soon as possible. In this guide, I'm going to start with the requirements and recommended stats for fighting Sarah Doman. Then we'll discuss what gear to bring and what inventory to bring with you. Afterwards, I'll talk about how to travel to the God Wars dungeon and whether or not you should use an ecumenical key or just get the 40 Sarah Doman kills. Then, before showing the fight itself, we'll discuss the mechanics to expect when you get in there. Following that, the actual fight examples. Finally, we'll get into the possible loot that you can get from Commander Zilliana. To access the God Wars dungeon, you need to partially complete the Troll Stronghold quest, and if you've never been to the God Wars dungeon, you're going to have to bring three ropes with you. One to get into the dungeon itself, and two of them to get into Serdo's room. These ropes will stay permanently, you only have to bring them the one time. This is going to be a range guide, so I suggest having 80 plus range if you plan on grinding out multiple kills. If you're here for just one diary KC, then you could go as low as 70 and make it no problem, though it would be a much slower kill. If you truly plan on grinding out a lot of kills, you should get higher range though. I wouldn't camp out this boss unless you had 90 plus range, otherwise you're going to get some really slow kills overall and maybe some shorter trips. I also suggest 70 defense, mostly just to wear pretty good gear, but just like your range level, the higher the better. A good defense level can help you stay at Sarah for much longer between trips, you'll have to use less food. 70 agility is required to get into Sarah Doman, and there is a lot of running involved, so just like both range and defense, having a higher level in agility is going to benefit you, but it's not quite as much of a benefit as the other two. I do suggest 70 plus prayer for Sarah Doman. The higher your prayer level is, the more prayer points you get when you sip a prayer potion or a super restore potion, but you could survive in here with as low as like 43 for just your protection prayers. Level wise, that's all the main requirements and recommendations that I have. Have, so we can move on to the gear and inventory. Like I said before, this is a ranging guide, so the setup is pretty straightforward. Just bring your best range gear. You don't need the best in slot gear by any means to kill Sarah, but it, with higher level stuff, you're going to have longer trips and get a lot of kills per hour. I'm going to go over each gear slot, not only showing your best options, but some lower level choices for those on a budget or even Iron Men. Starting with the weapon, the Twisted Bow is insanely good at Sarah. The bow bases its strength on the opponent's magic level, and Sarah has a really high magic level, which bodes well for you. If you're using the T-Bow, I highly suggest Dragon Arrows for that max hit but amethyst arrows will work well if you're on a budget but somehow have a bow. Your next best option is going to be the Armadil Crossbow, which can fire enchanted dragon bolts and hit very well on Sarah Doman. You could bring regular diamond and ruby enchanted bolts instead of the dragon variant, but it's going to result in some slower kills. Dragon bolts are more expensive, but they can make up for the price difference with faster kills, especially if you have an Ava's Assembler to pick up all of your bolts. If you can't get the Armor Crossbow, the Dragon Crossbow is a cheaper alternative, and the Rune Crossbow is generally the weakest weapon that some players will fight Sarah with. If you're using a rune crossbow, you do have to use regular diamond and ruby enchanted bolts. It can't use dragon bolts. You should bring both types of bolts with you, though. You want to start with ruby bolts, and once you do 50 to 60 damage at Sarah, you can switch over to diamond bolts. In your helm slot, I go with the Justicier Helm just for a little bit of extra tank power since it's pretty beastly and my bow's DPS makes up for lost accuracy. An Armadil Helm is not a bad option for the solid range bonus, especially with weaker weapons, and even as low as an Archer's Helm could be used. Void range gear is not that bad when fighting Sarah, especially if you decide to flick the minions, which is a little bit more of an advanced method. With Void gear, you can hit really hard, though you're not extremely accurate, and it does have pretty bad defensive stats. In your cape slot, you should be wearing an Ava's device, or even a range cape would work since it has the same effect as an Ava's accumulator. The assembler is your best option though since it gives a good range strength bonus and it'll pick up more arrows, you don't have to bother picking up bolts or arrows off the ground. The best range amulet in the game is the Necklace of Anguish, which also gives a range strength bonus, which is uncommon for anything other than ammo. The Amulet of Fury has lower range boosts in general, but it also gives defense bonuses and some prayer bonus to help with prayer drain. If you're really working on a budget, the Amulet of Glory can do the job too. For my chest and legs, I prefer to bring Armadil for solid defense bonuses, but they're also the top range armor in the game. If you're wearing a Void Ranger Helm, clearly you have to bring the Void Top and Bottom with you, and the gloves so that you get the full boost. After armor, I do suggest wearing a Blessed Dehyde Top and Bottom. With this Blessed Dehyde, you can have one Ceridoman piece and one Zami piece to make up for your God item when you get to God Wars Dungeon, plus it's pretty good gear that gives a prayer bonus. Carol's top and bottom is going to give slightly better range and mage defense than Black Dehyde, but it's not a whole lot better and it's the same range bonus as Black Dehyde, so the cheaper alternative can work too. 
If you're using a one-handed weapon, you can bring a shield with you. The Twisted Buckler is the best ranged shield in the game, though an Odium Ward is a cheap alternative. For those with low defense, you can bring a Crystal Shield, especially if you are on a budget. Barrow's gloves are the best ranging gloves in the game and require Recipe for Disaster to be fully completed to get the gloves. Your next best option is going to be the God Dehyde Vam Braces or the cheap alternative of Black Dehyde Vamps. Pegasian boots are not only the best in slot ranging boots, but they aren't much more expensive than ranger boots, so ranger boots aren't used as often, though of course as an Iron Man your situation could be different. God Dehyde boots are also a fine option though. The Imbued Archer's Ring is the best ranging ring in the game, though a Brimstone Ring does have the ranging bonus of an unimbued Archer's Ring with some defense bonuses too. I highly suggest getting an Imbued Archer's Ring though. If you still have any questions about gear, be sure to leave them in the comments section below, but we're moving on to the inventory now. Your exact balance of potions and certain pieces of gear could change a bit depending on what you're bringing, but we're going to start with the blowpipe. I bring a blowpipe to knock out the minions after killing the boss. You could potentially bring blood spells to kill the minions and heal, but it's really not needed that much in here. And worst case scenario, you could just use your main weapon to kill the minions, but the blowpipe's going to crank through them. Using like a rune crossbow on them is going to be very slow, and sometimes you might not even kill all the minions before the boss spawns back. I usually go for Addy Darts in my blowpipe. Depending on what armor you bring with you, you might need to bring some extra gear for protection. You do need a Sarah Domen and a Zamrak item to be safe when traveling to Sarah. If you're wearing God Dehead armor, you could just take a Zami top and Sarah bottom, or vice versa, which makes it a lot easier. If you're wearing a Justice Your Helmet, it does count as a Sarah Domen item. I then bring a Zami cape with me since it's free to just drop off later if I need the inventory space. If you decide to use an Ecumenical Key, you're obviously going to have to bring one with you, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. I usually bring 5 Bastion Potions since I'm trying to go for fairly long trips, but out of the gate you could do as low as 2 or 3 Potions. Bastion Potions give a defense boost along with the ranging boost, but you could just bring regular ranging potions too. The balance of Restores and Brews is likely to change a lot as you practice more, so maybe bring extra Brews when you start out since you might make some more mistakes and take extra damage. In the long run, the goal would be to bring as few Brews as possible and then as many Restores as you can. I bring 4 or 5 Stamina Potions since there's a lot of running around, but similar to the Ranging Potions and Restores, you're only going to need more Potions if you're having longer trips. So for beginners, you might not need as many, 2 or 3 could do the job. I do bring purple sweets with me to help out with that run energy too, and it helps on the food side a little bit, but purple sweets are pretty expensive, so you try not to chow down on them. In my rune pouch, I do have steam runes, earth runes, and nature runes, which allow me to use high alks and bones to peaches. If you haven't unlocked bones to peaches as a spell, you can just bring bones to peaches tabs with you that you bought from the grand exchange, but it does require an extra inventory space. You need 55 magic for high alking and 60 magic to use the bones to peaches spell. I choose to bring a max cape with me because it counts as a holy wrench while not taking an extra inventory space and it's also my teleport out of there. Normally you would just bring two Trollheim teleports with you, that way you could teleport to Trollheim one time and then revert the tab back into a house teleport for your escape. If you bring the cape instead, I'll show you a drop trick to save an envy space used on the Trollheim teleport that you're going to be bringing with you. If you have any questions about what you're bringing in your inventory, let me know in the comments section below so that I can get back to you as soon as possible. Getting to the God Wars dungeon is not super complicated. With minimal requirements, you could just use a games necklace to teleport to Berthorp, and then walk there, which is going to require climbing boots too, but it's highly suggested to just unlock Trollheim teleports. You have to complete the Eater's Ruse quest, and the teleport requires 61 magic, but you can also make these teleport tablets by using a redirection scroll on a house teleport. The scroll of redirection is a reward from the Nightmare Zone. If you're teleporting back with a max cape or you have any other teleport that you don't want to waste an envy space with that troll heme telly, that can be fixed really easily. You just have to teleport here twice. First, go ahead and bring the majority of your inventory, but maybe a quick bank teleport with you like a dueling ring or even just a house teleport. Simply teleport to Trollheim, drop a potion on top of the mountain, head back to the bank to get that potion back and another Trollheim teleport, teleport back to the mountain and pick up your potion. From here you can walk down either side of the mountain, head north to the boulder, but you gotta make sure that you're protecting from range attacks when you walk past the trolls. To get to the dungeon you need either 70 strength or 60 agility, but you also need 70 agility to get into Sarah's lair, so that shouldn't be an issue. If you've completed making friends with my arm, you can light this special fire in the cold area outside of the dungeon so you don't lose any stats or run energy. It's pretty convenient no doubt, but it's not really going to change your kills per hour that much. Once you're inside the dungeon, Saradon's camp is on the east side of the dungeon, and the first time that you go in you're going to have to place a rope here, and here. 
Once you're downstairs, all you need to do is go through the door to fight Saradomen, but to open the door, you need to kill 40 minions in the dungeon that are following Saradomen, or you could just use an ecumenical key. For Saradomen, getting 40 kills isn't too bad, especially if you're getting longer trips. If you fight the monsters in the Wildy God Wars dungeon boss, though, they can drop an ecumenical key as an uncommon drop, and it takes a similar amount of time to get a key as it does to get 40 kills. It's all based on your RNG, but if you don't bring a key, you save an inventory space. I usually just keep one key in my bank for emergencies in case I die, but even without that key, you do have plenty of time to get back into the lair and get your stuff back. Otherwise, I normally go for 40 kills. I also like to bring my alt to resupply in between trips, so I only have to focus on getting those 40 kills one time for a bunch of trips. As long as I'm getting at least 10 Saradomen kills inside the lair, that'll supply my 40 kills every time I need to bank on my alt. Before we run into Saradomen's lair, let's briefly talk about each monster's mechanics. Commander Zilyana has two attacks, one of them's magic and one of them's melee. Both attacks require Sarah to be standing very close to you though, so that's why you run around the room a lot to dodge her, plus she attacks very fast. Her max hit is a 20 with mage and a 27 with melee. There are three minions in the room, one for each attack style. If you kill the minions before the boss, they can respawn during the fight, but if you kill the boss, then the minions, they won't respawn until the boss does. Bree is the ranging minion and has a max hit of 16. He is easy to spot since he's the only one using a bow, but Bree is also the centaur in the room. Growler is the major and also has a max hit of 16. Growler is the lion and uses an attack that looks like he's yelling at you, or in other words, growling. Finally, Starlight is the melee minion with a max hit of 15. Starlight is the unicorn, and Starlight will follow you around the room along with the boss, so it's pretty easy to spot. Finally, we can go ahead and talk about how to fight Commander Zilyana. I suggest setting up your quick prayers to protect from magic and whatever your best offensive range prayer is. Rager does use a lot of prayer points, but it speeds up the kills, which is going to make up for the money in the long run. When you first walk into the room, as with all God Wars dungeon bosses, the first kill is likely to be the most hectic since the monsters will be in random spots in the room. As soon as Commander Zilyana can see you, you want to start running around the room specifically away from her. Again, at first, it may be a little hectic, so you might have to run for a few Few seconds before you actually get a chance to attack but once you're running around the edges of the room with the boss and the melee minion just following you you can begin to attack the boss while you still avoid them you can attack twice on each wall once in the middle and once in the corner and it really is just as simple as this run around and kill her you're protecting from the major running away from the boss and starlight and currently only tanking the ranger which has a max hit of 16 so you're pretty safe one thing to be careful of when running around the room is clicking too far up in the wall or even into the black abyss around the room. If you click up on the wall or further out, it doesn't register as a click at all, and your character will stop running soon, which is a good way to take a lot of damage. So try to be kind of precise and make sure you're clicking on the floor. When you first start fighting Sarah Doman, you might be making some mistakes outside of clicking on that wall. You could find yourself clicking on the minion instead of the boss. This isn't detrimental to your kill, and it'll even help you get through the minions faster, but overall, you're going to get used to landing the boss each time that you attack. Practice does make perfect. Keep in mind, if you're not flicking your prayers, you have a little bit of leeway when you attack the boss. And by that, I mean you don't really have to click on the boss on a specific tick. You have a few ticks to do it while you can still avoid damage, and because of this, you can take an extra second to make sure that you got the boss instead of the minion when you try to click on it. If you need to sip a stamina potion, you want to do it at the beginning of a fight rather than midway through when you're running low on energy. The stamina effect will slow down your run energy drain, so you, you want to be standing around for as little of that effect as possible. It is better to sip a stamina late in the fight than it is to run out of energy overall though. Purple Sweets can help you out with Run Energy 2, giving 10 energy per sweet. Eating food delays your attack by a few ticks, but you can still manage to eat a Purple Sweet and get two attacks in on the wall. Make sure when you attack Sarah from a corner spot that you wait until Sarah is getting pretty close to you when you don't have very much time to run away, and then run away last second. As soon as you run, go ahead and eat a Purple Sweet. Run about 75% of the wall rather than half of it. Attack once run to the corner, attack again. Your character is going to take a moment to attack while in this corner, but if you timed it correctly, it'll attack when Sarah is just about the same distance as she was when you first attacked on the previous corner, so you can just restart the process from here. Again, purple sweets are expensive, so try to only eat them when you need some run energy and she's at low health, or if you're out of food and it's a super emergency. Once you've killed the boss, you want to take out the minions as soon as possible. I normally start with the melee minion, then the ranger, then the major. I also use my blowpipe spec on the major to hopefully heal up a little bit when needed. You have a minute and a half to kill the minions and prepare for the next kill. After the minions are dead, you can pray at the altar, but it does have a 10 minute cooldown. You can also teleport out of the room by right clicking on this altar. You can turn any bones that they drop into peaches for extra food, plus the minions sometimes drop monkfish, which is helpful for a lot of food. 
The boss has a prayer potion drop and a drop that'll give you bruise and restores, which will help out with the longer trips too. I try to stand on the south side while leaning a little bit east to start the fight. As soon as the boss spawns, I attack it once and then start running west. When I hit the west wall, I'll attack again, maybe wait a second if the boss is still a little too far away, and then proceed to run clockwise around the room and start the whole process over again. You can start in a few different spots, you don't have to specifically be on one square. As long as you start running around the room away from the boss and the melee minion, you're going to be fine. But if you're trying to flick minions during the fight, it can be helpful to be a little more precise, of course. You could just wing it honestly and still get 20 kills per trip if you had solid gear. You don't have to be perfect in here. Each of the minions attack every 5 ticks, which is actually pretty slow in general, so it makes them some of the easier monsters to flick in the game. If you're just starting out Sarah or God Wars Dungeon in general, you might not want to try to flick your prayers, but it is very worth learning in the long run. Any of the minions that aren't attacking at the same time can be protected from. The Unicorn's gonna headbutt you for its attack, the Ranger will shoot its bow for its attack, and the Major starts to yell, you'll see a little white aura begin to fire out from him. Your prayer needs to be on the same tick that you see the attack stars, so if you're looking at the ranger and it begins to shoot its bow and you have not yet clicked your protect from range, it's already too late. This means you have to keep track of the timing and click your prayer one tick beforehand. But if flicking the minions does seem like too much, you don't have to do it, it's just going to save you a lot of food in the long run. If two minions are attacking you at the same exact time, you can step under one of the minions before it attacks just to delay it for a moment. This requires you to click under the minion two ticks before it attacks rather than one tick. When you start trying to flick the minions, you might want to ignore getting them off tick until you're more comfortable. If they're attacking at the same time and you're a beginner, you probably should just tank one for now, but it's always worth a shot trying to run under them. I wouldn't really try to protect from all three minions right out of the gate either. I started off by only flicking between the ranger and the major while just tanking the melee as I killed it as soon as possible. Once I felt comfortable protecting from both the ranger and the major though, I would throw the melee protect in there too just to get some practice. When I run out of supplies, I do bring my alt account to give me more potions since it takes a lot less time than teleporting out and coming back to get 40 kills. Since you do kill 4 Sterodomen monsters per boss kill, you only need 10 boss kills to get a high enough KC to walk right back in the room after you teleport out. It's not needed to have an alt account that can get into God of War's dungeon, but it's going to speed up your kills per hour and it's going to help with profit, which will take us into the next section. If you have any questions on how to kill Sarah, be sure to leave those in the comments section below. Alright, now let's go ahead and get to the best part, the loot. When sitting down for a long camping trip, I expect about 20 kills per hour at Sarah. You can definitely do a little more, like 23 to 24, but for beginners and anybody who needs to bank more often in general, I would expect even less, so we'll range from 8 to 20 kills an hour while we discuss profit in this section. The notable drops from Ceradomen include the Ceradomen Hilt, Armidal Crossbow, Ceradomen Sword, and Ceradomen's Light. The Hilt and the Crossbow are each a 1 in 508 drop, the Ceradomen's Light is about twice as common as those, and the Ceradomen's Sword is about twice as common as the Ceradomen's Light. This means if you got everything on the drop rate, at 508 kills you'd have 1 Crossbow, 1 Hilt, 2 Lights, 4 Swords. Currently those items add up to about 66 mil, which is actually lower than normal, but prices always fluctuate. At 20 kills per hour, you would get 508 kills in about 25 and a half hours. 66 mil in 25 and a half hours is a little over 2.5 mil per hour. There's other drops outside of the rare stuff, of course, and they tend to add up to right about the same amount of money as I'm bringing in supplies, but at lower levels, you're going to be spending more money on supplies, they're going to be shorter trips and whatnot, so if you're only getting those 8 kills or so per hour, it's going to take a little over 60 hours to get that 66 mil, which is just over a mil an hour, minus the supplies. A mil an hour is doable at your lower levels, but maybe more like 800k an hour should be expected. A lot of this does depend on your gear and levels, obviously, but RNG can play a big factor since all of these numbers are based on getting the item right on the drop rate. So if you get really lucky, you can make bank. If you get really unlucky, you're still going to profit, most likely, but not as much. Ceradomen also has a pet that can be obtained at a 1 in 5,000 drop rate, just like all the other God Wars dungeon bosses. The Ceradomen pet is pretty cool, though it's not my favorite God Wars dungeon boss pet. At a 1 in 5k rate, that means your fastest pace would take you like 250 hours if you got the pet right in the drop rate, so it is pretty rare. I believe that is all of the information that I wanted to give you about fighting the Ceradomen boss, everybody. If you guys have any questions or even any tips of your own, be sure to leave those in the comments section below. I'm sure we're all just trying to figure out ways to get a little bit better at Sarah. If you're looking for some more advanced tips, I do plan on making an advanced version of this guide in the future, so I will link that in the description when it is a thing. If not, you'll just see a uh, coming soon sign in the description. If you enjoyed the video or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to drop a like and subscribe for 
more content. On the note of more content, I do stream on Twitch multiple days a week, and I have a Twitter and a channel Discord. All links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do hope you enjoyed, and best of luck on your Sarah Doman grind.